And here you are again, and in this part, we're going to find the solution of this problem. We're going to find the optimal solution by applying the objective function. And we're going to do that in two ways. We're going to draw the objective function and move it over the feasibility zone. And the second part will be that we will be identifying all the intersection point, all the corner points of the feasibility zone and calculate the value of the objective function there. Now let's have a look at the objective function. So before we created the feasibility zone, now we have to find the maximum of the objective function. Now what we can do in order to draw the objective function, we have to determine the slope of the equation. And remember that the slope of a line, the slope m of a line ax plus by is equal to c is given by m is equal minus a divided by b. So we can calculate the slope of the objective function as m is minus 100 divided by 165, which is approximately minus 0 0.61. So when you have that, you can draw the line and you can start drawing the line on the graph. So we have the graph that we had before, and we can start in the lowest point, which is in the origin. Of course, here the profit is equal to zero because we are producing nothing. There is, it is a solution, it complies with all the constraints, but it's basically not a solution which we should consider. It's basically the lowest value that we can have. Then we move it slowly further, and what we see here is in fact at the segment which is over the feasibility zone and basically outside of the zone also, but that's not of our concern concern, we have basically here that the profit along this line is a constant for all the points part of the feasibility zone with, which are on the line, the profit is the same. So this is the equi-profit line. We continue. We move it farther and farther away so we can still go farther until we reach this last point where we have the intersection of the two lines, which is the last point of the feasibility zone. And we can identify this point, we can calculate this point being 161.20. So basically when we do it like this, we can find this point and we have to calculate it, or in some cases we would be able to read it from the graph. If I would have more details in the coordinates, more horizontal and vertical lines, I would be able to read it quite easily. But it's not always the case. Now, when we are looking at the other solution, is that we have to determine the different corner points. And we still have the same feasibility zone, and we can start with the different corner points. The first one is the point zero, zero. We don't have to do any calculations there. Then we have the intersection with the horizontal line y is equal to 175 with the y-axis, which gives us the coordinate 0 and 175. And now we have to continue for the next point. And the next point is the intersection with the line 1.5x plus 3y equals to 600 and the y equals to 175. So when I replace y in the first equation, I find that x is 600 minus 3 times 175 divided by 1.5, and we find that the x-coordinate here is 50. So basically this intersection point is specified by the coordinates 50 and 175. Now we continue to the next point. We already know from before we calculated it's 160 and 120. And we have the intersection of those two equations, 1.5x plus 3y equals to 600. And 4.5x plus 6 times y is 1440. Now, how do I find x and y? Well, first I can multiply the 
first equation which gives us 4.5x plus 9y is equal to um, 1800 subtract the second equation and I find the coordinate of y and then I put y in the first or the second equation and I find x and if I do that you can do it separately you will find that the coordinates are 160 and 120 which gives us this new corner point we continue with the next corner point which is the intersection of the red and the purple line so we have 4.5 x plus 6 y is 1440 and x is equal to 300 so basically we find here that y is 1440 minus 4.5 times 300 divided by 6 and i find y equal to 15. so this gives us the next point we find here 315 and basically we come at the end of the zone where we have the last point 300 now we can put all of that in a table and we use the corner point method so once we have all those corner points i can put them in this table and i can calculate the value of the objective function so for the first one zero plus zero is of course zero we already know that the next one is x zero so we have 100 times zero plus 165 times 175 which gives us a total of 28,875 so now we have 50 and 175 so we have to add 5,000 to this number which brings us 33,875 and the corner point 160, 120 gives us 100 times 160 plus 165 times 120 is 35,800. And continue with the two last points where we have 100 times 300 plus 165 times 15, which gives us 32,475. And basically the last point is 300 and 0. I find 100 times 300 plus 165 times zero is 30,000. So basically when we look at all those points, we see that the combination of x 160 and y equals to 120 gives us the highest profit. And basically this is the optimal condition that we have to consider. So basically this was an exercise. We did it in three steps. We have an exercise which is a maximization problem where we first determined the equations then we have drawn the feasibility zone and the last step is that we have found the optimal solution by the graphical method and by the calculation method next thing to do is to consider a minimization problem and find the ways to resolve this type of problems we will do all three steps in one video so the next step we will have that minimization problem we will continue with linear programming you're doing a great job and i'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video thank you and bye bye